Welcome back to Great American Ballpark. Well, 30 years ago, Pete Rose broke Ty Cobb's record to become baseball's all-time hits leader. And for all of the success the Reds legend had on the field, he's been surrounded in controversy off of it. He's been banned for baseball from the past 26 years, but here in Cincinnati, he's still a hometown hero. From Western Hills High School in Cincinnati, please welcome Pete Rose. I think he should have a role here, no question. I, I think um, I don't think he can ever be back in the game in a working capacity as far as decision-making capacity. I don't think that's going to happen, obviously. But I think it's time that I'm glad that Major League Baseball is allowing him to be a part of this. Um, nobody knows the game better, follows the game more, is a bigger icon in the sport and certainly in this city. Um, so to have him be a part of things, um, I'm very excited for him, I'm excited to see him, um, and hopefully this is an entry for him to have at least a small role, whether it be with the Reds and or the Phillies or, or some of the teams he's played with. I spoke about the importance of being an iconic player and, and how you get there in my opinion and, and, he, and Pete epitomized that as far as first of all being a local homegrown kid, loving uh, being a Cincinnati Red being a multiple, multiple all-star, all-time hits leader, manage the team, you know, what else could you ask for this guy to do that is any more pro Cincinnati than what Pete Rose has done? So um, I think when people around the country fully understand what he's meant to the city of Cincinnati beyond what he's meant to baseball, but the city of Cincinnati directly, uh, they get a much greater appreciation for his contributions to this franchise. So I, I, I I hope that's not lost in this because he's a he's an unbelievably special person to the city of Cincinnati. Well, Mark, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of Pete Rose's meeting with Commissioner Rob Manfred. Yeah, they said this week that it'll happen sometime in August. They don't have an exact date right now, but obviously a lot of folks will be interested to see what happens with Rose moving forward. And now as we get in the second half of the baseball season, what's going to happen with these Cincinnati Reds moving forward? We know Jay Bruce is being shopped around. Certainly there's going to be some interest in Johnny Cueto. At this point, we're hearing the Dodgers, the Blue Jays, the Astros, the Royals, potential suitors for the Reds' ace. Meanwhile, Todd Frazier, he should still be in Cincinnati for a few years at least. He was asked about impending free agency down the road, so he's not thinking about not that thinking right now. Not thinking about that just yet. But right now, Todd Frazier is thinking about humbly being a superstar. Just a start. I, I could be batting ninth. It didn't really matter, but I just saw a little bit ago, and uh, it's pretty cool. So, like I said, I can't wait to hear my name announced and, uh, you know, see what I do, man. It's time to step up. I, and uh, last year, everything was just so fast-paced. Didn't know, really know what to do. And for me, just, you know, trying to cruise right along, enjoy the time and the fans and uh, stop and take as many pictures and autographs as I can. And this is, you know, this is our city. So in my city and I love it. I enjoy it so much. It, it's cool to see. I got a life-size poster on the wall there, you know. I feel like LeBron James does in Cleveland sometimes, but it is. It's, uh, it's um, very humbling and um, it's just pretty cool just to be, you know, around this atmosphere. Like I said, walking, looking around these guys, you're amongst your peers here. What, what else can you, you know, can be better? All smiles for Todd Frazier. What a night in the home run derby for. Yeah, we talked to him before he won that yeah. derby. And after he won the derby, he said he knew after Jock Peterson hit 14 in the finals that he had to beat 14. And he thought to himself, 14, that's Pete Rose's number. That's the Hit King's number. He knew he had to top the Hit King to become the home run derby king. What a night, a night that everyone in Cincinnati will remember for a long time to come. Shifting gears now to the American League and the Cleveland Indians, they got off to their patented slow start this year. So we caught up with the Indians' lone representative here at the All-Star Game, Jason Kipnis, to see how they're going to turn it around in the second half. We're obviously having some uh, some troubles getting the tires going on this first half of the season, but I think uh, this team's starting to play a little bit better baseball. Um, we know what we have to do. We know what team we have to be to be good in the second half, and uh, it just really comes down to executing it. It's one thing to say. It's one thing. Uh, it's another thing to do it. So we have the pieces there. Our pitching staff, if you've looked, has been fantastic. We have five strong starters. Um, what's going to come down to is our offense. We've got to score enough runs for them. You know, Kipnis went on to say this is his second All-Star appearance. His first appearance, he had a teammate, Justin Masterson, with him. He's hoping he get, comes back to the game, but doesn't come back as the lone Indian representative. Well, more to come here from Cincinnati in the 86th annual All-Star game. Keep it locked on WOSN.